Sky Outdoors, powered by Town Pump, fueling your next outdoor adventure, is also brought to you by Counter Assault, your ultimate protection in the wild. Montana Army Navy, get it, get out, and live it. McKenzie River Pizza, the best pie in the big sky. Bob Ward's, everything outdoors, Montana style. Glacier Real Estate, your real estate connection to Northwest Montana. And the Outdoor Report is provided by Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Hi, and thanks for joining us this week on Big Sky Outdoors. I'm Matt Redding, coming to you today from the beautiful Logan Pass area in Glacier National Park. We're all familiar with the sights and sounds, wildlife, and the crowds of the Glacier National Park in the middle of the summer. But today we're gonna to look at Glacier in a little bit different perspective. Today we're gonna to look at it in the dark. My name is Mark Wagner. I'm the Hudson Bay District Interpreter for the park. So I run educational programs, visitor centers, things like that. That's my main job. I also um, coordinate the astronomy education program, which is why we're up at Logan Pass today to look at the night sky. And that's uh, something I've been doing for about nine years now. So a lot of people ask, why do we look at the night sky in national parks? Parks have been here for so long, for over 100 years in the case of Glacier, we have now discovered that these are some of the darkest places in North America because we've not allowed a lot of development. And so suddenly we have this new value associated with places like Glacier, which is fantastic dark skies. What I like about this is it's a new value. You know, we protected Glacier for great geology and beautiful flowers and lakes and glaciers. But now we really appreciate the night sky because it's so amazing here. And for many people who live in urban areas, they have no night sky, it's gone. Artificial light has removed it. And in fact, two thirds of the people in the world will soon not be able to see the Milky Way from where they live. That's how much artificial light we have. So when people come to here and they get to really see what it's like, we're in a really dark place, they're, they're absolutely amazed. It's really a fantastic experience for them. We like to come up to Logan Pass three or four times a summer when there's not much moon because that means the sky will be really dark. And this is a really dark place. There is no artificial light here whatsoever. And it's a spectacular setting. So the National Park Service is in charge of this program at, at Logan Pass and in the park. But it's the type of program that we really don't have government funding for. So we rely on partners to help us put this program together. And we have two really important ones. Uh, the first one is the Glacier National Park Conservancy. They are our philanthropic partner, our fundraiser. And honestly, without them, we would not be doing this program because they are able to get private donations and then they move that money into us to be able to hire volunteers, to buy equipment, and to, and to put this program on. We also don't have enough staff or telescopes ourselves to be able to accommodate six to 700 people that might show up here at Logan Pass. And so we've partnered with the Big Sky Astronomy Club. They have awesome members, they have lots of good telescopes, and they will come up here and join us at Logan Pass so that we can set up, up 15 to 20 scopes uh, we don't want lines to be really long. We want people to be able to move around and get to see things. So they are a great partner and they really have uh, done a nice job for us and, and we wouldn't be able to do this without them. Yeah, I'm Mark Paulson. I'm the president of the Big Sky Astronomy Club. We're a group of about 25 um, uh, amateur astronomers. We just like sharing our passion of, with, of the night sky with the people that uh, come to visit and participate. What kind of things are we going to see tonight? Well, um, there is a, uh, a grouping right after sunset. Uh, Mercury, Venus, and uh, Jupiter are uh, in the western sky. And I don't know if we'll be able to see it here because of the mountains, but you need kind of a low horizon. But Saturn is out, Mars is out, as far as the planets are concerned. And then there's everything else in the night sky, the deep sky objects, uh, double stars, there's nebulae, um, uh, star clusters, globular clusters. We just run the whole gamut, uh, planetary nebula. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot to choose from. <laughs> Big Sky Outdoors is brought to you locally by your Montana Honda dealers and by Parkside Credit Union.
Com. We appreciate the opportunity to serve you and give back to the communities we live in. Come check out our expanded wine areas with a great selection and low prices. This month's specials include corn dogs, two for two dollars. A 32-ounce fountain drink is just one dollar, and Bud Miller and Coors 30 packs are only $21.99. Thank you for supporting our Montana-owned and operated Town Pump stores, fueling your Montana adventures since 1953. Glacier Real Estate understands why you live, work, and play in Northwest Montana. Let Tim Gravel and Kenyon Matheson help you buy or sell your next piece of the Montana dream. Call Tim or Kenyon of Glacier Real Estate today. Hey! Right. We're here. Right. To start now. <laughs> all right, all right. They've arrived. The party yeah, has arrived. Turn the lights off. And we have often considered why do we do an astronomy program in a national park where the important things here are grizzly bears and glaciers and wildflowers and lakes. And, and I, I've thought about that a lot myself. I, I think looking up at the night sky in a dark, wild place like this gives people almost a primitive experience of what humans did most of our existence as a species. When we come up to Logan Pass, usually everyone's we're setting up telescopes, people are getting ready for the program. We have to wait for it to get dark. Now that's kind of difficult in the middle of the summer this far north. It doesn't get dark till quite late. So we have some other things going on. And one of those is that we do an introduction, we talk about the values of dark skies, and we, talk, and we show a video that we put together that help introduce people to some of the bigger ideas and what will that viewing experience be like. Take sort of a bigger picture look at the sky. We don't want to get right to telescopes and look at individual objects right away because I think really one of the most important experiences is just to be able to look up at the whole sky at, at one time and take the whole thing in and we then get laser pointers and we do tours of the night sky. So we kind of take people around the constellations, show them some of the famous things, say like the Big Dipper, and point out where some of the objects are that we're gonna be looking at. Constellation Cygnus, and we also call it what uh, the Northern Cross. So we tell some stories, cultural stories from either the Blackfeet or the Greeks or you know different groups. The Indians call it the walking road. What it is, it's the road the dead take to go to the, get to heaven. And all the stars on it are campfires of the dearly departed. Every culture has a uh, story about the constellation. Here, yeah, let's see if we can get started. And then we let people move to all the telescopes and we try to set them up on lots of different objects. You know, if planets are out, we'll certainly look at those. Uh, yeah. Beyond the rings, in between There's the rings. Yeah, I can. All right. Amazing. Uh, Looks like an eye. But then deep sky objects as well, like nebula and galaxies. and all, There's lots of really cool stuff to see. And when it's really dark and really good, stable sky, Logan Pass is like one of the best places to look anywhere. So one of the things that happens when people come to an area where there's going to be a really dark sky and they have not really experienced it in their life is they don't, they don't really know what to expect. And it's typical. This happens every year a couple times. We'll be setting up telescopes, the sky will be darkening, and someone will look up and say, oh no, it's getting cloudy, we're not going to be able to see anything tonight. And then we look up and it's like, no, the sky is crystal clear, and we say, no, just give it a chance. And what's happening is the Milky Way is coming into view, and they've never seen it before, and they think there's clouds. That just shows you how amazing an experience people can have to see the Milky Way for the first time, and they, they really thought they were clouds. I, I, I love when that happens, only in the sense that we know we're going to have someone who's really impressed tonight. I think for me, the most important thing is for people to come to appreciate that dark skies are important and that there's so much awe uh, in the night sky for them to, to connect with. It's, it's almost a spiritual experience, I think, for a lot of people to be able to see the really dark sky for the first time. So the Dark Sky Initiative is a program through the International Dark Sky Association where they look at uh, interested uh, agencies, uh, municipalities or parks or anything like that that want to apply. Uh, to their organization to get the designation that shows that they are night sky friendly or that um, they're interested in preserving the night sky resources. IDA dark sky designation include uh, an interpretive component. This is the Andromeda Galaxy. So that dense, that dense area. It's an island universe, mm -hmm. two and a half million light years from us. It's about third larger than our Milky Way. Then you also need to have a lighting plan for replacing your existing lighting fixtures with night sky compliant, uh, either light sky compliant bulbs or total retrofit of fixtures. One of the ways we're trying to get our um, 
lights fitted or exchanged with the night sky friendly lights is through grant proposals that we have through the Glacier National Park Conservancy. The last year and a half I've been working on Glacier's um, International Dark Sky application. I've been the primary coordinator of it. And what that job really entails is um, doing a lighting inventory, writing up lighting management plans, coordinating with Interp and with the different science departments to kind of get this application together. The International Dark Sky Association Board is going to review this application uh, the end of September. We're hoping to get some sort of review and from there um, we're hoping to do a joint announcement that will come out this winter. This effort has been coordinated with Waterton as a World Heritage Site and International Dark Sky Park. So the general public can get involved. They come to the park and enjoy the night skies, learn about the, the resource that's, that's out there that we kind of take for granted. Counter Assault, manufacturer of the original Bear Deterrent, has been in business for 30 years. Proven effective through scientific and university testing, Counter Assault set the standard for what wildlife professionals recommend to deter bear attacks. As a National Park Service Ranger for nearly 30 years, I trusted Counter Assault as my first line of defense for bear encounters in the field. My staff and I knew firsthand the effectiveness of Counter Assault Bear Deterrent, and that's why we trusted Counter Assault. Carry what the professionals carry. Counter Assault Bear Deterrent. Look for the red can. Army Navy is your hunting headquarters. It's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting. Knife sharpeners, wool gloves, backpacking meals, optics, socks, boots, insoles, stoves. Why, it's a virtual hunter's checklist. All name brands and all at fantastic savings. On Highway 2 in Evergreen and Highway 93 in Whitefish. Get it. Get out. Get out. Get John Ashley. I live about half an hour or to an hour west of Glacier National Park. So I published Glacier National Park After Dark. Um, it's available at all the gift shops in the park here and it's available on websites and whatnot. It's really a, a primer for dark sky friendly lighting and all the reasons for dark skies. We have Blackfeet sky stories, there's funny first person stories, things that happen at 3 a.m. in Glacier Park, all sorts of neat things. And one of my favorite photos shows Comet Lovejoy rising over Lake McDonald and Mount Brown in the winter time. Those three nights were nine below zero, 11 below zero, and 21 degrees below zero. And I was out all three nights trying to photograph that comet. And so the, the cover photo for the book is the, the one night when I finally got a good photo of Comet Lovejoy. A lot of astrophotographers uh, just photograph the sky without anything in the foreground. Um, that's okay, but it's a lot more interesting to include something in the foreground that you recognize. So if you put a mountain, one of your favorite mountains in the foreground or a waterfall or, or a valley or a lake or something like that and include the night sky, it makes it much more interesting. It was about 20 years ago now uh, when I came out to photograph this mountain, Mount Reynolds, uh, with the Milky Way flying behind it. I'd seen it on a few nights when it wasn't quite clear, wasn't perfect conditions, um, so I finally nailed it. I came out on, on one night right after the pass was open so the air was good and clear, and I was standing in the parking lot at, at the Logan Pass Visitor Center in the middle of the night, the Milky Way flying past that mountain, and it only took about, took less than five minutes before it cleared the mountain. So I only had a little bit of time to get everything just right. Um, but that's another one of my favorite, one of my favorite mountains and one of my favorite photographs is the Milky Way behind uh, Mount Reynolds here.
I arrived in Glacier Park as a seasonal employee about 30 years ago and was shooting film at night in Glacier. When I first started shooting, the, the stars went all the way down to the horizon. Um, but I saw over the years, as the, the light pollution increased, you could see that the, the glow from the towns were coming up and starting to steal the horizons away so that you can only see stars part way down. The Dark Sky Initiative, really the whole idea behind it is to keep the bright lights within the city limits and keep the starry skies in our Montana's big sky. I mean, that's the whole goal, that's the whole objective. So Glacier Park is, is going that route. We're, we're trying to retrofit and dim down the lights in Glacier. But also, we need to be educating the communities surrounding the park about the benefits of dark skies uh, at night. Um, there's a lot of benefits. Um, dark sky friendly lighting is healthier. It costs less. It's also more pleasant to look at. Uh, and it's actually uh, safer. You would think throwing a lot of light into a parking lot would make the parking lot safer, but the studies they've done show that it's the opposite because now your eyes can't see anything but the parking lot. You can't see into the shadow anymore. Of all the environmental concerns that we have right now, uh, by far the Dark Sky Initiative is the easiest one to achieve. Uh, it, we could fix it in a month if we just had enough education, if people knew about it and knew about the benefits of it. And so this is, this is a slam dunk, easy to do, win-win situation for everyone. Glacier Real Estate understands why you live, work, and play in Northwest Montana that Tim Gravel and Kenyon Matheson help you buy or sell your next piece of the Montana dream. Call Tim or Kenyon of Glacier Real Estate today. With your on-the-go lifestyle in Montana, it's nice to have peace of mind behind the wheel. And the 2016 Accord with Honda Sensing is safer than ever. This driver assist technology reduces the potential of a collision by alerting the driver and can actively steer and brake in emergency situations. For all your running around, the Honda Accord can be yours for just $189 a month from your Montana Honda dealer. Honda, it's the perfect ride for Montana. Here's this week's outdoor report by our friends at Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. The largest freshwater fish in North America is also the rarest fish in Montana. I thought I felt a tug. But after a recent catch, Montana's native white sturgeon are showing signs of recovery. It would be great if we could get white sturgeon delisted and you know maybe someday reestablish some sort of limited fishery for the biggest fish we have in Montana. White sturgeon are found along the coast and inland from Alaska to California. But in a landlocked portion of the Kootenai River, the white sturgeon is endangered. And in Montana's portion of the river, it was estimated at one time to have less than five sturgeon left. Between the late 70s and 2009, our agency wasn't really even looking for sturgeon because they were thought to be pretty much functionally extinct in the state. The Kootenai's white sturgeon decline is due to the lack of reproduction. So a massive stocking program was undertaken 25 years ago to help these long-lived fish rebound. We're estimating 150 to 200 right now, so in terms of a hatchery program, increasing numbers of sturgeon, it's probably worked. A major breakthrough came just a few weeks ago when Sylvester and crew caught Montana's first known wild adult white sturgeon in more than 45 years. You know, pretty rare event, at least for us. We're out on the river quite a bit, and you don't see adults, and we weren't capturing adults, but it's a step in the right direction, I think. This female could signal natural reproduction in Montana. But considering these fish can live for more than 100 years, it will still be some time till biologists know for sure if Montana's white sturgeon are recovered. Might be the end of my career before you know whether these efforts ongoing now or over the last 20 years even helped. Obviously they're helping reestablish a population, but whether that helps in terms of recovery and recruitment, you know, I don't know. I'm Winston Greeley out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks. The greatest thing is when somebody looks 
uh, at something that you have in your scope and they go, oh, wow. You have all the characters. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Very because cool. That is that's so neat. Oh. Really I mean, that wow factor. I mean, that's just what gets you, you know? I mean, I can remember as a eight-year-old seeing Saturn for the first time. And that feeling uh, just that I was hooked. I mean, I was absolutely hooked and uh, I've been at it ever since. Night skies are important for a lot of other things like wildlife and, and it's for humans as well. We've really isolated ourselves from darkness. It's not healthy. I also hope as with the, that these programs that people go home seeing what a dark sky could really be like. And when they go to their communities, wherever they are, that they p start pitching in and, and, and sort of helping their communities understand why they should have dark skies. In Montana, a bright starry sky is part of our cultural heritage. I mean, you think about all the campfires, all the hunting camps where people have sat around a campfire and, and watched the stars and watched meteors and shooting stars and comets. I mean, that's part of our history. That's part of our culture. And I want to keep it that way. I want the, the next generation of children and, and their children to be able to see the Milky Way, to be able to see shooting stars. That's my goal. If you would like more information about the Dark Skies Initiative and some of the programs available here in Glacier National Park, go to Glacier National Park's official website, which is nps.gov glac. Or if you want to support the program, go to Glacier National Park Conservancy at glacier.org. And of course, if you want to feel inspired about looking at the dark skies, go to John Ashley Fine Art to look up his book, Glacier National Park After Dark. Thanks again for joining us this week on Big Sky Outdoors. We'll see you next time.